Hello everyone and welcome back to the Cleveland Browns franchise. I'm your host Husker Eurocat and today the Browns, after a successful divisional round win, have pushed through to the AFC Championship against the Buffalo Bills. Last week in their divisional win against the Kansas City Chiefs, the Browns found, uh, for at least one game, a rushing attack with MVP Raheem Mostert running for 139 yards and three touchdowns and adding a fourth touchdown receiving. When was the last time the Browns had over 170 yards on the ground? Oh, I just can't remember. The defense did an outstanding job as well, shutting down the offense of the Chiefs in the second half, not letting them score a point while scoring 20 of their own. Today though, from New Era Field, it's the Brownies must win against the Buffalo Bills. Remember, they played in the same stadium in week 14 of the regular season and fell one point short. In that one, the Bills held Cleveland's offense in check in the second half, not allowing a point. As a matter of fact, the Browns scored the first 16 points and then it was all Bills the rest of the way. Browns are hoping that today's game will be quite different than that. But before we get this game going, let's go to the field for an update from Eurocat Baby. Husker, it's definitely not what you would call ideal down here. The temperature is ideal for football, but it's just above freezing and the rain is coming down. It's supposed to be sporadic through the game, but the real problem is that it may become freezing rain by the end of the game. If either team needs to have an aerial assault in the fourth quarter to win this game, it could prove very difficult. Both coaches are preparing for a ground game in this one today, knowing that throwing the ball may be difficult, and more so as the game goes on. Well, I quite agree with them. It could even turn out to be a defensive struggle. Let's get this game going. It's the Browns and Bills for the AFC Championship. The Browns have won the toss and want the ball in the second half. So the Bills start from their own 25 yard line and Sean McCoy takes it to the 29. Second and six. Taylor goes back, rolls to the right and gets a two yard gain. They're gonna call it third and five. Gives the ball to McCoy, and he does not get the first down. A punt is in order. So Stafford and the Browns take over, and Mostert doesn't get out of the backfield. On second down with Mostert in the backfield, Stafford goes back to pass, and it's incomplete intended for Brashad Perriman. So on third down, Stafford goes back to pass and throws complete to Perriman to the 40-yard line of the Bills. Stafford throws right over the top of Randall Johnson and into the waiting arms of Brashad Perriman. Now on second and nine, with Barnage in motion, Stafford hands off to Mostert and he goes around the left side and he's inside the 35 for a four-yard game. Third down, Stafford throws incomplete. A dangerous pass to Hawkins. 52-yard field goal by Kaini Fairbairn, and it's off to the left side and no good. And the game remains scoreless. Buffalo has it at the 42-yard line. Taylor is sacked by a blitzing J. Ron Hosley for a five-yard loss. Second down, he gives to LaShawn McCoy and he goes up the middle for a six-yard gain. Out of the shotgun, Taylor goes back to pass, avoids the rush and completes it to Goodwin, but not enough for the first down. So after the punt, the Browns have it at their own 16-yard line, and it's complete. It's Gary Barnage finding the soft spot in the defense. 
with Mostert the single back. Stafford rolls right, throws an interception. And Ronald Darby is back to the 38-yard line of the Browns. On an ill-advised pass, Stafford just doesn't get it over the top of Ronald Darby, and he has the interception. With Harvin in motion and out of the eye formation, Taylor takes the ball and hands it off to LaShawn McCoy, and he's up the middle to the 34-yard line. Third down, and seven to go. The give is to Williams, and he has the first down. He's down all the way to the 26-yard line. And Taylor on a quarterback bootleg. He punches it down inside the red zone to the 16-yard line. Second down, Taylor throws complete to Williams. Just out of reach of Josh Jones and down to the one-yard line. And that brings us to the end of a scoreless first quarter. The Bills have it deep in the Browns territory. At the one yard line, Taylor fakes it to McCoy and throws to Charles Clay in the back of the end zone for the Bills' first score of the afternoon. Normally, Dante Whitner would have been all over that, but was unable to stop that one. The Browns now need to see if they can answer back. Stafford is sacked by Manny Lawson back at the 19-yard line. Third and 17. And the pass is long and incomplete off the hands of D'Angelo Hall and just about intercepted. Andy Lee on for the punt. And he kicks it out of bounds on a bad kick. The Bills take over at the 44 of the Browns. And the give is to LaShawn McCoy, and he's up the middle and inside the 40-yard line. And Carlos Dansby appears to have injured his ankle. Oh, that's not good. Third and two. And McCoy is around the right side for a first down inside the 35. The 31 yard line. Taylor gives to Williams and he's inside the 30 yard line for a five yard gain. Second and five. Williams again inside the 20 for a first down. Now on third and six from the 13, McCoy gets the first down inside the 10 yard line. Second down from the four. The pass is complete. Touchdown, Buffalo. Just a little out of the backfield crossing pattern from Marquise Gray and it's touchdown, Bills. And that brings your score to 14 to nothing, Buffalo. From the 22 yard line, Stafford goes back and it's complete to Perriman for a nice 16 yard pickup. First and 10 at the 38. And it's complete again to Perriman and he is in the clear. Touchdown, Brashad Perriman. Matt Stafford sees a single coverage and D'Angelo Hall misses the tackle and sends Brashad Perriman in for the first score of the afternoon for the Brown. And that brings us to our two minute warning with your score 14 to seven, Bills. On second and 12 from the 23, Taylor has him in the eye and gives off to McCoy and he's up past the 25. Third down conversion up here. Six yards to go, Taylor's in the backfield and McCoy out of the backfield, catches the first down pass over the right side. Now Taylor going back, throws across the middle to Watkins and he has another first down. At the 45 of the Browns, Taylor throws an interception to Justin Gilbert. The last man to beat is McCoy and he can't tackle him and it's a pick six 
for the Browns. Justin Gilbert read that one all the way. Jumped the route for the Browns and saw lots of green all the way to the end zone. With a tie ball game and the Bills three and out. Stafford and the Browns have it again and it's complete at the 42 yard line to Josh Gordon. Stafford back to pass again. Throws long, got Perriman inside the 30 yard line of the Bills. First down from the 29. Stafford rolls right and has Barnage inside the 15. That brings on Fairbairn for a 31 yard field goal and it is up and good. Your halftime score is 17 to 14. The Browns have taken control. Well, once again, the Browns haven't been able to establish a ground game. Only five yards on five carries. That's not what I would call having a successful rushing campaign. The Bills, on the other hand, are proving to have a balanced attack, focusing on the run game a little more than the Browns. Cleveland has had a good first half in the passing game, and that's what's kept them in this one. As you can see, time of possession is a factor and may become an issue if the Browns can't remedy that in the second half. Welcome back to New Era Field for second half coverage of the Browns at the Bills. For a coach report on the game so far, Let's go to Hero Cat Baby on the sideline. First of all, for Cleveland fans, this could be a huge impact on the defense, and it's the middle linebacker, Carlos Dansby, has suffered a severe ankle sprain and will be out for the rest of the game. Oh, no! That's not good at all. I know, Husker. The doctors are reserving judgment going forward if the Browns should move on to the Super Bowl but they're concerned that he'll be out for that as well. So in for at least the rest of the game will be Christian Kirksey. I asked Coach Bettini about the impact that this may have on the Browns, and he said that while Car Carlos is a huge loss, he has full confidence in Christian's ability to fill that position. He added that you can't really replace Carlos, Stansby, but some of the other players like Christian just have to step up to the challenge. He also said that while the Browns are going to work with what the Bills' defense is giving them, they will be focusing on the rush in the second half. He understands that this needs to come around if the Browns hope to hang on to the ball a little longer than they have been. Coach Ryan is pleased with his team's performance and said that they just need to keep executing their assignments and doing it a little better if they want to come out on top in this game. Christian Kirksey has some big shoes to fill. So let's see if he can fill them. On first and 10 from their own 25 yard line, Stafford sends Johnson in motion and Turbin on a counter play goes to the left side and he has the first down. From the 37 on first down, Bill showing blitz and they get Turbin in the backfield for a four yard loss. On second down, Mostert in the backfield. Stafford loads up and throws long and complete to Josh Gordon. 10-5, touchdown, Browns. It seems like Stafford is picking on D'Angelo Hall. Finds him in single coverage against Josh Gordon and into the end zone for another Brown score. The Browns are now up by 10, and the Bills need to come back in this one. Tyrod Taylor fakes the handoff and is throws incomplete to Percy Harvin, and Chris Wood is called for holding, and that'll back the Bills up. Josh Jones is down with an elbow injury, and that's not good because he's the backup. Doing a mighty fine job, but still a backup nonetheless. Taylor throws complete to Harvin over the 20 yard line. And on third down, 11 yards left to go. And Clay gets it over the 30 yard line, but misses the first down. 
It's third and eight for the Browns. Stafford goes back to pass and rolls right and throws complete to DeAndre Hopkins beyond the 40. And on first down, the give is to Robert Turbin around the left side, and he gets out past the 45 for a five-yard gain. Stafford fakes to Mostert and rolls right and is sacked. Randall Johnson getting to him back at the 35. Now 17 yards to go, and it's intercepted in the middle by Preston Brown. And Ali Marpet is down and injured, and that does not look like a good one, an injury to his head. Marcus Gilchrist gets to Stafford as he releases the football and the interception by Preston Brown back to the 37-yard line. That puts the Bills in excellent position. And Taylor back to pass, throws long, and it's intercepted by Justin Gilbert. And he's running free up the right side and tackled. Oh no, this one is coming back, folks. Offside call on Barkevius Mingo. Second and five. It's complete to Harvin. He's free into the end zone. Bills touchdown. Just out of the reach of Joe Hayden, and he gets turned around and goes down, and into the end zone goes Percy Harvin. Oh, my. Out on an island, Joe Hayden goes for the ball and gets burned. That brings us back to a three-point game. And Stafford sends Turbin in motion, and it's complete to Hopkins over the left side, and he's got a first down inside Bill territory at the 45-yard line. Back again to pass, and it's complete first down. Brashad Perriman inside the 35. Now Moser goes to the right side and carries for a first down inside the red zone at the 18 yard line. First down carry for Mostert and is into the end zone. Touchdown Browns. And just that fast on a play that's just awesomely blocked. Did you see that pancake by John Asamoah? And into the end zone goes Raheem Mostert. For an injury update, let's go to the sideline and Eurocat, baby. An update on the injury to free safety Josh Jones is that he landed on his elbow. The trainers are saying that it is a slight bruise and that he'll be in on the next possession. Now right guard Ali Marpet is another issue. He may have sustained a slight concussion and is out for the rest of the game pending a thorough examination. Taking his place on the line is veteran John Azamoa. That's good news about Josh Jones, and we'll be eagerly waiting to find out what happens with Ali Marpet. Again, being down 10 points and at the 25-yard line, Taylor sends Harvin in motion, and up the middle goes LaShawn McCoy for a nine-yard pickup. Second and in inches. And the give again is to McCoy, and he has the first down. He's over the 40-yard line to the 41. Now on first down, Taylor gives to Carlos Williams, and he's up the middle, but a clipping penalty negates that and brings it back. The end of the third quarter, and it's 31-21 Browns. First and 24 for the Bills, and another penalty. False start this time on Jerome Felton. And that brings them back to 29 yards on first down. Taylor goes back to pass, and he throws long, and it's complete on a perfect pass. Chris Hogan catches it inside the 30-yard line. Taylor. Passes complete to Harvin, but he fumbles the football. Dante Whitner picks it up and he's back to the 30 yard line. But there's a booth review on this fumble. 
Percy Harvin, you see, catching it there. And that is really inconclusive, that view. Let's see from another view if he has the ball going down or not. And I don't know. It looks to me like it may be a fumble. But I don't know. Let's see what's called. And the play is reversed. And now it's third and six for the Bills at the 14-yard line. And Taylor goes down in the backfield. Back at the 18-yard line. So that brings on Dan Carpenter for a 35-yard field goal. And it's up and it's good. 31-24 is your score with the Browns leading in this one. And on a counter play to the right side, Mostert gets past the 40-yard line for a seven-yard gain. Three yards to go for the first, and he has it over the 50-yard line and into Bill's territory. Stafford pitches back to Robert Turbin, and he's inside the 45 but that's coming back on a holding penalty on Gary Barnage. First and 20, Stafford gives to Mostert again, and he's over the 50 and fumbles the football, and he got it back himself. Now on second and six, Stafford gives to Mostert again, and he bulls his way for almost a first down. Third and in inches. The give is up the middle to Malcolm Johnson, and he has the first down. Now from the 30-yard line, Stafford gives to Johnson again, and he's to the 25. And that brings us to the two-minute warning with your score, 31 for the Browns and 24 for the Bills. Third and eight. From the 28-yard line on a counter right side, Turbin has the first down and is inside the 10-yard line on some tough running. First and goal, Mostert inside the five. Now on third down from the five-yard line, Stafford tosses right to Turbin and he's into the end zone untouched. And he gets the pile on effect. The inside gets blocked well. DeAndre Hopkins holds his block. And in the end zone goes Robert Turbin. 38-24 is your score. Taylor back to pass. Completes it to Hogan across the 30-yard line. Second and three. And the Bills now in the hurry up offense. Taylor in the shotgun, rolls to his right, throws complete to Percy Harvin across the 35-yard line. From the 36, it's first and 10. Taylor throws, and it's intercepted by Dante Whitner. Taylor was dealing with some major pressure coming down on him. Throws a bad pass into a crowd, and Dante Whitner comes down with it. And all the Browns have to do is take a knee, and this one will be in the books. And the Browns are going to the Super Bowl. They have successfully swept the AFC playoffs and are on their way to U.S. Bank Stadium. That was outstanding play by the Browns, especially on the part of the running game in the second half. I'm not sure where they came from, but they gained almost 120 yards on the ground in the second half and two touchdowns. While the offense amassed 221 yards in the second half, the defense held the Bills to 134 yards and only 20 of those were on the ground. Definitely a reversal in the second half. The Bills did better in the red zone for the game, but it was the kind of scores that helped the Browns pass the Bills. Touchdowns definitely help in that part of the game. 
It just looked to me like as the game went on, the Bills defense just started looking a little tired. And once that happened, the Browns were able to find some room. One of the big keys is the time of possession. If you look at that stat, the Browns were able to hold on to the football with sustained drives. And it showed not only on the Bills defense getting gassed, but on the scoreboard as well. You definitely can make a case that Matt Stafford has had better outings before. 47% completed is not real good and his passer rating reflects that. Those two interceptions didn't help anything, but the two passing touchdowns as well as almost a 300 yard game in the air is nothing to sneeze at. The real improvement throughout the game was in the running game. Raheem Mostert and Robert Turbin shared the carries in this game and had an outstanding second half of play. I don't know if any of you are seeing a difference, but it just seems that Mostert is getting stronger through the season, being able to get a good chunk of yardage after first contact. What really helps, as was witnessed in his touchdown run, is how well the offense was blocking for him. He didn't even get touched on that carry. If there were any doubts before, They've been silenced by Brashad Perriman's 141 yards on five catches. He's back, folks. The defense will definitely feel the absence of Carlos Dansby in the middle. But the fourth-year man out of Iowa, Christian Kirksey, played just over half the game and seemed to do pretty well. The next game will tell if he's really up to the challenge or not. Seeing Hayden and Whitner leading the group in total tackles isn't exactly heartwarming, but against this caliber of an offense, it isn't exactly unprecedented to see the catches allowed climb a little as well. Next up for the Browns is their biggest challenge yet. They have never made it to the Super Bowl, and it's time to see who they play and it will be the Seattle Seahawks. They successfully retired the Detroit Lions from the playoffs, beating them 24 to 20 with a come from behind win. The Browns will have to be in top form as they face Pro Bowl quarterback Russell Wilson and the powerful offense of the Seahawks, or as we like to call them in Cleveland, the Sea Chickens. If you take a look at this lineup, especially the offensive line and defense, it is littered with pro bowlers. The defense, led by cornerback Richard Sherman, looks to be as good as the Browns have ever faced before. Look at all those players in the 90s. It just gives me the chills sitting here. One weak spot, however, is in the same spot that has to be filled on the Browns roster, and that is a middle linebacker. Their number one man in Bobby Wagner is out for the Super Bowl with a shoulder injury, so in for him will be second year man out of Alabama, Reggie Raglan. Just like the Seahawks that will most likely try to expose the coverage of Christian Kirksey, the Browns will need to try to expose Raglan as well. Can the Browns travel to U.S. Bank Stadium and tame the beast in Seattle for their first ever Super Bowl title? Please keep in mind that if you enjoyed this video, leave a like so that others can enjoy it as well. And if you would like to be notified when there is a new one, subscribe by clicking on my icon at the end of the video. It's been our privilege to bring you coverage of the Cleveland Browns upending the Buffalo Bills for the AFC Conference title. And in our next episode, see the Browns as they travel to U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis to face the Seattle Seahawks in Super Bowl 52. 
Until then, for Eurocat Baby, I'm Husker Eurocat saying so long for now, and have a good day, everyone. <laughs>